You know what's funny? After watching Cabin in the Woods, I watch movies like this with new eyes. <laughs> Chernobyl Diaries, or as it should be called, The Hilskis Have Eyes of Itch. So in the Chernobyl Diaries, a few friends want to go see the sites. They want to explore this place. Of course, there's going to be some radioactive freaks. You saw that in the trailer, and that's pretty much what it's about. These, these people are trapped. They're running from the radioactive people who still live there. On that, it's exactly how you think it's going to be. The movie's absurdly predictable. You're like, this is going to happen. Now this is going to happen. I saw that in the trailer. This is going to happen. Funny thing is, when I saw the trailer, I thought, oh, okay, another found footage movie. But it's actually not one of those found footage movies. That surprised me. I was glad of it. I was like, okay, I've seen a lot of those found footage movies. Chronicle pretty much capped on that. We've seen it done in a lot of horror movies. So I was glad that it wasn't yet another found footage movie. It just looks like it because someone films it with a shaky cam the entire time. Yeah, it's hard to see what's going on. There's another annoying thing about the movie. When things are actually attacking people, the camera's just doing this. So you're like, I... I don't know. They could be getting attacked by beetles, not not the life form like the band. I wouldn't know it. This movie does have that anxiety feeling. I'll give the movie that. You know, long dark hallways, one flashlight. You feel like you're playing Silent Hill or the first Resident Evil for the first time, only you're watching it. Among the intensity in the movie, like there's a scene where this chick gets dragged away and they're going after her, but you hear her voice coming from, uh, there's a lot of hallways, so it's just echo and they don't know where to go. And I was putting myself in their shoes and I was like, I wouldn't know where to go either. And I'd feel really guilty. Like I felt like I just killed that check. When a movie can do that, that's not a bad thing. That's actually what they're supposed to do in these situations. Other than that, you've seen this movie a hundred times before. It's like, we need just a few teenagers to die in a movie. What hasn't been done yet? Oh, Chernobyl? Perfect. We'll do that. They already did the whole nuke thing in Nevada. Let's do the radiation in Chernobyl. Don't worry, my Japanese friends. Your time's probably coming soon. <laughs> and the acting's not good. There are some scenes where you're like, yeah, you're lucky you chicks are hot, and that's what happens when you have a singer in a movie. Even a horror movie, that doesn't really require a lot of acting. Yeah, it's apparent early on, these people are in this movie simply to die. At a point, I was like, oh, there's only four people. It's not a lot of people to watch get slaughtered, and then two other people come in, they're like, hey, can we join the tour with you? I was like, oh, okay, there's the cannon fodder. These people have now entered the movie simply to die. Which I understand you need in a movie like this, but don't make it so blatantly obvious. But my statement about Cabin in the Woods still stands. After you see Cabin in the Woods, you look at movies like this and you're like, yeah, the formula that they spelled out in Cabin in the Woods is exactly how this is going down in this movie. I'm telling you, man, behind the scenes, these two guys were pulling the strings. As the end of the movie was happening, I was like, okay, if it wraps up well, if it has a good ending, I'll bump it up a grade. But no, I hated the ending. It was shit, so, you know, can't do that. I mean, I credit the movie with a nice creepy vibe and a couple of intense scenes, but in the end, it's okay, but you're not gonna remember it in T-minus one day. Yep, already forgot. It's nothing special. You get out of the movie theater, you move on to whatever else you have going on in your life. Now, I've noticed that some people are really pissed that this movie got made because they're like, ah, oh, Chernobyl was a huge disaster. It was a tragedy. I can't believe they made a movie like this about it. Making a slasher flick out of a tragedy? That's just unconscionable bullshit. I would say, don't even worry about it. We live in a world where we have movies about Nazi zombies of the SS. The fact that movies like that exist this doesn't take away from the tragedy of the Holocaust. The fact that Chernobyl Diaries exists doesn't take away from the tragedy of the Chernobyl meltdown. Someone just saw an opportunity to make a cheap horror flick and they did it. It's not the first horror flick to come out of a tragedy or disaster. It's not going to be the last. I mean, there are things worth getting worked up about in the world. Chernobyl Diaries, not one of them. So now that we're done with that soapbox, yeah, Chernobyl Diaries not worth watching. So what's your favorite? Oh, the creepy people are coming after us and they're gonna kill us and that's we have to survive. We're probably not going to movie. Whatever it is, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more.